Great. Dictated. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. This is Rich Comber. I'm head of threat prevention engineering in the Americas. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, sandblast for the endpoint uh, today. Um, for any of you that uh, was on our um, webcast just last hour, I'm, the first um, couple slides are going to be a, a, a bit of a repeat. Uh, it's going to be a completely different demo. Ho hopefully, this is going to be a um, uh, successful. So we'll we'll walk walk through it and uh, appreciate your patience here. Um, so Sandblast uh, is Checkpoint Zero Day Protection Set. Uh, we've been uh, providing that uh, on the network for uh, about five years now through what we call threat emulation. Um, the focus is on a, a number of different attack vectors. Uh, primary vectors are mail and web, but also includes things such as uh, phishing or data store, um, lateral, lateral attacks uh, uh, between uh, PCs and whatnot. And we'll get into some specific details with that. Um, at the core of Sandblast and our zero day protection set is two technologies. One is threat emulation, and it's the actual behavioral analysis of files uh, in, a, in a safe environment. We, uh, we strip files out of web or mail streams and detonate them uh, either uh, at our data center in the cloud or on dedicated TE appliances located um, uh, at, your, uh, at your site, so you maintain control and confidentiality. Uh, and threat extraction. Threat extraction is focused on data type files where we scrub that content. We remove v, uh, VBScript, JavaScript, uh, macros, things that can be used to weaponize files coming into your users. For, you know, do you have a type of user that, that uh, clicks open, open, yes, enable, uh, boom, and, and then they're calling help desk because they have an issue, they just were infected? Well, threat extraction has helped help to protect those those type of users because they're um, they're uh, it's there to protect them from themselves. It's uh, there to protect them from um, getting a the initial infection vector because this solution is in line, working in a preventive mode. So, at the core of our sandbox are some key technologies. Uh, CPU level threat detection. Uh, this is a patented technology uh, unique to Checkpoint uh, in, in that we use Intel's Branch Trace Store BTS API to monitor CPU flow control and to determine if exploits such as return oriented programming, jump oriented programming, uh, privilege escalations are being attempted by the file that's under observation. Uh, we also have a technology called push forward. This is focused on flash files. Uh, flash files, as you know, uh, are delivered as part of a, a web page. Uh, could be advertisement, could be little um, animation or things to attract uh, someone's attention to go click on a screen, part of the screen, click on a link. Um, they can be used to deliver malicious content, do a drive-by download down to your, um, your employee's desktop. Uh, we can take that flash file and detonate it in a safe environment. One of the challenges with flash files is that they're very particular. If they're not detonated in the right environment with the right version of browser, if they're not fed the right uh, parameters, uh, or they're not in uh, communication with uh, the sites that they're, uh, they're supposed to be communicating to, they typically uh, error out and exit and don't, um, if they're malicious, they won't continue and, and do that malicious process. Push forward technology is designed to force the execution, even if it doesn't have the right parameters, even if it isn't in the right browser, even if it's not communicating and getting the right feedback, it forces execution to the next step until we get to either the end where it's fine or we discover malicious intent and we, we identify that file as a malicious content. And then lastly, uh, we have a concept called cadet when it's focused on content awareness. Where are the files coming from? Who, who is the sender? Who is the recipient? 
is, is this part of a mail message? Is this a, a download from a cloud-based store? And we, we not only look at the content of the file that's being analyzed, but who's the sender, who's the recipient, what content is, it's, is it being received? And, and be able to make intelligent decisions based upon that. Um, our sandbox environment uh, typically takes less than two minutes to come back with the behavioral analysis. Now, these are only a couple of many different technologies that's built into Checkpoint Sandblast solution set. We have machine intelligence, uh, self-learning models that are constantly being fed and uh, re-evaluated as we process hundreds of thousands of files every day within our environment. Um, we, we have over a million and a half different uh, users uh, on endpoints that are is leveraging this technology today. Uh, over, uh, we have thousands of customers. We have um, about 10,000 gateways that uh, utilize our Sandblast uh, technology as well. Uh, we provide inline protections. Uh, Checkpoint's uh, philosophy is one of prevention, defense in depth, providing a, a layered approach. If your network fails, if your security control uh, at the endpoint fails, we still have additional layers that can provide visibility and protection that work in conjunction with each other. Um, we support protecting inline uh, hold mode so that you do not have a victim zero. Many competitive solutions will allow a victim zero or the first file to get in uh, and then be able to stop it on the second or third time it's seen. Um, Checkpoint's approach is to stop that first time. Threat extraction, again, works in conjunction with emulation so that we can sanitize uh, data files and pr provide clean content. We can either do that by leaving them in their native mode Excel as an Excel, Word as a Word, or converting them to a PDF and flattening out any active content. An example of that might be like this as part of an email where uh, the file uh, is labeled as clean. You can open it within PDF and see the data within the PDF file. Uh, if the original is needed, there is a link to grab the original that goes to a portal that allows access, as, so long as the original file was determined to be benign and not malicious, if it is malicious, the user cannot get access to it and is told as such. Don't take my word on it. Uh, Checkpoint has uh, been tested by third-party organizations such as NSS Labs. Um, in fact, uh, we've been involved with their last several breach uh, uh, tests. The last test they did was one uh, breach prevention test uh, in the end of last year. Uh, Checkpoint ranked the highest among all of the uh, security solutions that were analyzed. Um, we were very effective. The, the uh, rightmost uh, column represents security effectiveness uh, up to 100% and the leftmost column or the bottom column going uh, from right to left uh, represents the cost to deploy. So Checkpoint had the highest security effectiveness at the lowest cost to deploy the solution set. So uh, this session, we're gonna focus on our endpoint uh, solution with Sandblast. This is called Sandblast Agent. This, it can be used to enhance traditional AV capabilities. Now Checkpoint has a full endpoint suite but Sandblast Agent is a subset focused on providing zero day um, threat detection capabilities. Um, protecting you specifically against malicious downloads, both HTTP and HTTPS. Providing uh, uh, anti-phishing capabilities, detecting sites using a behavioral analysis methodology, uh, looking at the age of domains, uh, how long has that site been in existence, is it a secure site, is it HTTP or HTTPS, is it uh, emulating or duplicating graphics or content from well-known financial sites like BOA or PayPal or Amazon or whatnot, um, protecting against reuse of corporal credentials. Uh, one of the big challenges today is that if 
as a hacker, I can get a user's set of credentials. I can just walk into your environment, connect through your VPN, connect to your, uh, your, your web portal and act as a user uh, and bypass uh, much of your security controls. Um, and unfortunately, you know, our users aren't that sophisticated. Many folks will reuse passwords and, uh, and, and the Active Directory password is one that they know because they're using it every day and if they reuse that on an untrusted site, you certainly want to know about it and we can show you how we can help with that. Looking at infected devices, if a bot uh, infects a system, uh, we can identify it, we can identify it down to the service and we can even do self-enforcement where we can isolate it from the rest of that network so it can't spread laterally. And then of course, anti-ransomware. We've added anti-ransomware capabilities to identify ransomware attacks. Again, it's a behavioral engine. It's not based off of signatures. We use honeypots and other technologies to identify the ransomware uh, style of attack and uh, provide the ability to recover files even after they've been encrypted. And last but not least is our forensics for EDR uh, to be able to tell you how did it get in? What was the damage done? Uh, you know, what, what data was touched? Was any data exfiltrated? And then to take automated actions to, to remediate that particular attack vector. So protecting from phishing sites, one example of that, you, you, your user gets a, uh, an email, it has a link, go to a site, looks like it's going to uh, Office 365. We compare that, we, we look at a number of different factors. We can tell you, okay, um, this is not Office 365, this is a lookalike site, uh, and block the user from entering their credentials into that site. We do that before they start typing any information. Uh, corporate reuse. Um, if they enter their credentials into a site using their uh, current AD password, uh, we take a salted hash of that AD password. We save that salted hash uh, in the browser history. We don't actually save the password itself. That's, that's secure. We're just taking a hash of that password. And as they enter passwords in untrusted sites, we compare uh, assault, that salted hash of that current password they're typing in with the one that's saved and if it matches we tell them okay you're exposed your your corporate uh, AD password externally but more importantly we tell your operations folks that you need to have that user's AD credentials changed. Zero day malware okay that's an attack vector uh, be it HTTP, HTTPS, even uh, peer-to-peer uh, -peer or other methodologies, a password-protected file, um, you know, if you're not doing SSL inspection, many ways your network can be bypassed to, to get that file down to the endpoint. So ultimately, the detonation point is going to be on that endpoint. We can take that file, we can scrub it, we can uh, present a threat extracted version of it, um, uh, and then make that original accessible, unless it's, of course, malicious, and then we, we block it uh, from the user's access. Threat intelligence is a big part of this. We, uh, we provide threat intelligence, the same threat intelligence that's used by our gateways, that's used by our consumers with Zone Alarm, uh, Zone Labs. Um, we, we provide visibility into known CNC networks and uh, block command and control uh, connections out uh, identify that you have an a infection on that particular host and lock down that host so it cannot spread. Forensic data is constantly being saved. It's saved within a lo uh, local file on that endpoint. That file can grow up to about a gig in size. Uh, that represents anywhere from 60 to 90 days of forensic history that can be reviewed. We look at data in motion, process creation, process access, uh, URL access, network activity, uh, registry uh, keys uh, that are modified and, and keep this. Now upon a triggering event, uh, be it a third party AV engine, our AV engine, 
our anti-bot, our anti-ransomware, threat emulation, any of these can trigger a report. And we build a forensic profile based upon the data received and provide that data back in a visual, easy to follow representation. You don't need to be a forensic an uh, analyst to be able to make heads or tails about what happened for this particular incident. Um, as I mentioned before, what are some of the, your key concerns? Was the attack real? Was this really, or is this noise? Uh, what was the business impact? Is this something that I need to report to a regulatory um, agency? Uh, what were the t uh, actions taken to remediate that um, incident? Um, show me the attack flow. And then of course, how did it get into the system itself? What was the entry point into the system? What was the root cause? And last but not least is anti-ransomware, um, the ability to detect uh, a ransomware attack, uh, to uh, kill that attack and remediate uh, potential data loss. This one security control, if everything else has failed in your environment, this one security control has been proven to be over 99% effective in identifying ransomware attacks. Um, we, we evaluate new variants of ransomware every day. We run thousands of variants uh, against our engine. Um, and this one security control has been very, very effective at identifying and stopping ransomware attacks at the endpoint. All right, um, time to jump over to our demo environment. Um, while I'm doing that, um, Nir, is there any questions that we could answer um, while I switch over? Um, let me see. Uh, no, you can continue, Rich. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. All right, so here's an illustration um, of our demo environment today. We have three PCs, Pamela, Dan, and Bob. Uh, Bob is unprotected. Dan and Pamela uh, has our Sandblast agent on it. Dan has Sandblast agent without anti-exploit. Pamela has anti, uh, um, our Sandblast agent with anti-exploit enabled, and I'll show you the difference uh, when I try a couple different attacks against the, excuse me, against the environment. And then, of course, uh, on the back end, we have our management server, a domain controller, um, and our uh, smart event server, which is our uh, SIM. So let me jump over uh, to my cloud share environment here. Okay, and as you can see here, we got we have Pamela, we have Bob, uh, we have Dan. Uh, the white backgrounds are protected, the black background is unprotected, and then we have our domain controller, which is also our manager uh, that's used to manage um, the central management of our environment. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna go through is uh, an anti-phishing uh, example. So we're gonna jump over to Pamela, and then we're going to open up our uh, email. And so uh, one very common occurrence is to get phishing mail. Uh, and like for instance here, we have something that appears to come from PayPal. Uh, it, it says that, uh, you know, um, there, there's, uh, we've seen uh, PayPal activity. Please log in or, and uh, answer some security questions. This looks kind of legitimate. So we'll, we'll click on a link. And um, now you notice this looks like uh, it's PayPal. Uh, if you're observant here, you might notice something a little fishy here in the corner. A couple things. It's not secure. Uh, that looks like pal pay to me instead of PayPal. But if we click um, on the entry form, notice here we got this little pop-up. And, and this is part of Sandblast Agent on the browser. This is part of a, a browser plugin here within Chrome. And notice, here we are, uh, beware, deceptive, site block, details, unsecured. It's HTTP, not HTTPS. It has suspicious phishing characteristics, and it bears resemblance to PayPal.com. And so now you can see I can't click into that uh, field and enter information. I'm actually blocked. We block user entry uh, once we determine that this is a phishing site. And so what about credential reuse? So let's take an example of that. Let's, let's go to the actual PayPal site, www.paypal.com. 
All right, and here's the real live PayPal site, and let's go log in. And boy, that looks a lot like that phishing site, right? And so let's uh, notice here we're scanning the, the real site and, and notice, okay, scan finished, verified by zero phishing. The, now you can enter your information. All right, so let's say we have Joe, who's an employee at uh, abc.com. Um, and uh, Joe, unfortunately, uses his AD password uh, for, uh, you know, accessing PayPal. Well, boom. Um, as I enter the password and we, we compare that hash, um, the user is alerted, Joe's alerted that, hey, you're using your AD password on an untrusted site. Um, you, you need to keep your account safe, immediately change your corporate password. Um, just as important, uh, there's a log being sent to uh, operations that uh, you got a user here that's been exposing uh, their, their information and, and letting that out, out and about. So, okay, uh, that's uh, an example of using um, anti-phishing uh, from a user's perspective. So let's uh, close this down. And the next thing I'd like to do is show you an example of what um, threat extraction and threat emulation uh, through the browser looks like. And so at this point, we're going to uh, open up Chrome and we've gone to a Dropbox site and we have a couple files. Um, notice that we have the the Sandblast Agent for Browsers plugin enabled here. And also, I just want to point out that we do have Sandblast Agent enabled at the, at the agent uh, level at, as a client, and that we have anti-bot, forensics, anti-ransomware, threat emulation, and anti-exploit enabled and functioning um, at the desktop level. Okay, now this can work in conjunction with um, Third-party AVs, we've tested this with McAfee, with Trend, with Symantec, and it'll work side by side with it. But in comparison, my corporate, uh, this is my corporate uh, view, and you can see on my corporate, we have many additional security functions that are available at the endpoint, um, be it uh, firewall, application management, full disk encryption, remote access VPN, anti-malware, antivirus, compliance checking, rule checking, um, URL filtering. This is all in addition to the Sandblast agent components that, that I showed you here um, within my demo environment. So, so just keep that in mind, the checkpoint, this is part of our full endpoint suite, uh, but our focus today is on zero day protections and anti-phishing anti and exploit protections. All right, so I have this enabled. So let's download the first file. It looks, it looks like it claims to be a CV. And so we'll, we'll check on it. And notice, boom, access to the file has been uh, blocked. Original file is malicious. So we didn't even get to do threat extraction. We already knew that we've seen this file before. It was determined to be malicious. And we, uh, we stopped the download of the file, just didn't allow it to get to the user. You know. Sorry, you can't get it. So uh, let's try the second example. The second example is an Excel spreadsheet. We'll click uh, on the Excel spreadsheet. And same type of thing, you'll see a pop-up here that we're securely uh, downloading the file, scanning it for threats. And we're uh, again, we're doing a combination. Uh, in this case, original file downloaded, no threats were found. So here, here's the file. It retained its original format. We didn't identify any threats and it's protected. And, and, and your users are protected. In my last example, this uh, is a white paper, John Smith. And here we'll, we'll download the file. And then you notice a docx file. Okay, this was converted to a PDF and we can click view file. And here is the file uh, in, in PDF format. Notice uh, demo clean.x.pdf. Now, if I wanted to get the original, um, all, whoops, I, I didn't mean to close the browser. All I need to do is to click on the, uh, the browser plugin and notice I have this link, get original. 
So I can click on get original. And so long as the original uh, was found to be uh, benign by our sandbox, the original file is available. And there it is. There, there's the original file. Notice here's the PDF version. Here's the original. I can click on that and I can open that within Word. I didn't have to call help desk or anything. Um, I was able to self cater that and grab it myself, but we're, we're providing layers of protection uh, for the user. I enable editing. Um, and so here we are. Here, here's the original document within Word. We're good to go. Now, as a comparison, I want to do that on Bob's PC. So remember, Bob's PC is not protected. So I'm going to open up the uh, Chrome browser on Bob's PC. And here, here we are uh, again on that same site. And I'm going to download that first file. Remember that first file? Uh, Pam was told it was malicious. So just to prove that, well, all right, there it is. It downloaded, and there's, uh, there's the doc file. And let's uh, open it up. Here we go. And we're opening it up with Word. All right. All right. Okay. Boom. And so here, here we are. We got uh, a little crypto locker, little uh, little macro going on here. Something's going on. So, so this definitely has some active content within this file, um, and and showing that there is active content that we uh, identified and prevented uh, on Pamela's system. All right. Uh, so the next step is I'm going to demonstrate. Um, our anti-bot capability. So let's jump over to our domain controller and let me minimize my uh, management screens here. Uh, and by the way, uh, let me just update this real quick. You can see as I've been doing the demo, uh, we have zero phishing, threat extraction, threat emulation. So we're populating, we're getting logs, we're getting activity from the endpoints to our manager showing activity that's being captured and reported to the manager uh, based upon what's happening on the endpoints. So um, notice here I have um, a little um, messenger app. Now this is called Tonic. And so we'll, uh, we'll, dis we'll, whoops, we'll display Tonic here. And notice I have a connection with Pamela. Um, the first thing I'm going to do uh, is that uh, now this might be uh, – this might be a disgruntled employee, somebody, an insider, maybe a consultant uh, um, that's brought in. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create a variant of my, uh, my bot attack here. So um, just uh, you can see here I have an executable called bot.exe. Uh, we're, we're going to uh, modify that file. So I'm going to select bot.exe. Uh, I'm going to hit enter, and it's going to ask me to enter random seed. I'm going to type a bunch of characters here. And as you can see, um, the hash of the file has changed. So I've modified bot.exe, so it's a little different. And we'll close out of that. All right, so now that I've done that, we're going to send that file to Pamela. And let's go to our desktop. Let's go to malicious file shortcut. Here's bot.exe. And a little message. Hey, Pam, try out this new tool. Send. All right, there it is. You know, Santa Claus just sent this little present for Pam. Let's go jump over to uh, Pam's, and you can see here I got a little message indicator. Uh, I got something going on here, so I'll uh, pop that up. And uh, uh, Jim on the on the domain controller wants to send us uh, this file. Okay, try this new uh, tool. Sure, I'll accept it. Open the the container, and uh, let me see this new tool. All right, and so uh, we're gonna run it. And, uh, oh, what, what's this doing? Oh, it's a PowerShell. Uh, it's doing something here. Um, okay, I'm not sure what, what's going on. Oh, all right. And so now, as you can see, Sandblast Agent has detected a, uh, a bot communication. Um, we detected that uh, bot.exe um, 
is that file. And notice, um, as a remediation action, we just quarantine the file. So it's been, it's been removed um, out, of, out of the system. And so uh, we can click OK here. And uh, you'll notice there's like little squigglies going on here. This is the forensic engine. Uh, the forensic uh, um, engine was building a report uh, based upon that antibot activity. And so I can, I can take a look at that and show you. Uh, here's the forensic detail. So uh, how did this attack come in? It came in through tonic.exe, uh, my messenger. It created a file called bot.exe. Bot.exe executed, and it utilized task scheduler uh, and tonic and uh, a, a, a touched some files. It did script execution. It, uh, it changed the security policy, and it dropped uh, it, it, uh, dropped some files. So I can actually drill down into the incidents, and I like doing the, the timeline view. And this will show stage by stage what happened by each component. So here's tonic.exe. It'll show you file operations, network operations, suspicious events, damage caused by this. Notice it dropped bot.exe. I can click over here. And, and again here, we can look at file operations, registry operations, network operations. That was attempted to reach out to this site, okay? Um, here, here's where it uh, worked with task scheduler. If I go to process, here's where it uh, tried to create a task, a daily task to be executed. Um, and here's a, another task to be ex executed at 1832. And here's another task to, to be executed uh, a little later on in the day. So, you know, you can, you can follow all of these and, and understand uh, what's going on uh, from from each of these stages, and, you, and there's PowerShell, execute it using command.exe. We, we we did a ping. We we did you know reached out to to go to a particular site to to um, go use the network, and all of this is captured within the forensic report, and then shared back to the central management server as well. All right, so let me close this out, close this out, and close this out. All right, so that's showing um, antibiotic to trigger. Now, my last uh, example that I'd like to show is focused on anti-ransomware. Um, as, uh, as you know, ransomware is a big threat vector. Um, if uh, you haven't directly experienced it, uh, you probably know of somebody, you've, you've certainly heard of other organizations being impacted by ransomware attacks. Um, Checkpoint, uh, we decided that um, uh, we wanted to build a specific security control to focus on preventing ransomware at the endpoint. Uh, and this is exactly what, uh, what we'll do. So um, I'm gonna go through this scenario. Uh, we have, and I'm gonna do it first with Bob, who's our unprotected user. Remember, Bob doesn't have Sandblast agent here. All right, and so the scenario is, first I'm gonna open up uh, my files. Um, this is going to show, uh, if something happens here at the desktop, uh, this will show files being encrypted. Um, I'm going to open up Internet Explorer, and I am going to, I'm going to um, shrink this down a little bit, and I'm going to go jump to my store. Now, unknown to Bob here, my store has an exploit. And Bob didn't need to do anything else, didn't need to go to a site, didn't need, uh, oh, all he needed to do was connect to this site, and boom, you can see here something is already going on uh, on his desktop. Um, there, there are files that are being encrypted, and, and Bob is now infected with WannaCry. And Bob is going to have a bad day just by going to this site, okay? Uh, this site used a drive-by, uh, exploit targeted against Internet Explorer, um, and uh, you know, okay. Now Internet Explorer has uh, decided to die, and in fact, if I open this one file, we can see what's wrong with my files. Okay, your important files are encrypted. You know, please send three hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin to this Bitcoin address. Yeah, Bob's not going to have a good day today. So let's try that same thing on Dan. So we go over to Dan. 
Now remember, Dan is protected with Sandblast Agent. And I'll just pop, uh, pop this up to show. Uh, but in Dan's case, uh, Dan, we haven't enabled anti-exploit on Dan to show you the difference here. So this is gonna be using anti-ransomware directly without anti-exploit. So we'll do the same scenario. I'm gonna open up uh, my browser, uh, Internet Explorer. Uh, I'm gonna open up my files to show uh, my files here. Uh, I'm gonna go to my store and uh, uh, keep this. And so, so again, now, now in this case, the expected result is that Internet Explorer is going to get um, exploited. Uh, WannaCry is going to uh, start doing uh, its stuff down at the endpoint, um, but uh, Sandblast Agent is going to detect uh, WannaCry and uh, stop it in its tracks. Not only, not only, okay, so here we go. Internet Explorer has stopped working, okay? Um, close the program. And okay, here, all right, you, you can see here, uh, there's, there's some nasty stuff that started to go, started to work on uh, Dan's system. Now remember, uh, on Dan's system, um, we're running, okay, and here, and here is Sandblast Agent, anti-ransomware, uh, detected, uh, wanna cry, uh, doing, doing the attack, and uh, what we just did is we quarantined off um, all the files that were encrypted, and uh, we're building a forensic report uh, on, on the fly, and uh, as an automatic action, here we are, we're recovering the files, and cleaning the files up and putting them back to their pre-encrypted state. So uh, bringing it back to uh, its, its pre-attack uh, pre state. So you can see here, files restored, 85 out of 85 files were restored, original file location. And, and uh, I can drill down into that in a minute, um, but I'm gonna close this. I wanna jump over to Pamela and do the same attack on Pamela and see the difference here with anti-exploit. So first thing, we'll open up our, my files, put that over here. We'll open up Internet Explorer, kind of shrink this down a little bit. And then with Internet Explorer, I'm gonna go to my store. Okay, same, same place, same thing. Um, and again, uh, Internet Explorer is gonna have an exploit attempted to use against it uh, from this particular site. And in this case, we have Sandblast Agent with anti-exploit enabled, um, and, the, and the difference uh, should be that we'll stop the attack even before uh, uh, the ransomware was delivered down to the endpoint. And so here we are, uh, uh, checkpoint anti-exploit, exploit was prevented, an exploit attack was prevented in iExplorer.exe. Uh, we can go view the details on this. And so, uh, in fact, I can go look down here, I can go to our forensic report here and say um, the trigger was Sandblast uh, anti-exploit. Uh, what was the entry point? Internet Explorer accessed mystore.com favorite icon that ICO. Okay, so that that was the that was the uh, entry point. Um, the remediation was to protect Internet Explorer, and there was no business impact. There was no damage done. No, everything was protected. That's as far as the attack got, and we stopped it. Now, how did that look like as compared to what happened on Dan's PC? So if we go and view details on Dan's PC, and we go, let's see, go back to overview, and go to anti-ransomware. We'll look at this. Let me click OK here. All right, now here, in this case, the trigger was the anti-ransomware blade. So the, the attack got a little further, but we saw the WannaCry file, we saw the suspicious activity, we saw the fact that it was attempting to uh, encrypt files, and anti-ransomware was able to go and um, invoke itself 
Uh, we saw it trying to hide. We saw it trying to do uh, modifications of access control. Uh, we, we, we saw the damage. We were able to uh, stop the encryption and protect uh, all those 80, 85 files that were attacked were able to be recovered. All right, uh, so uh, this is Sandblast Agent. Uh, jumping back over to our domain controller, closing out uh, my bot attack stuff over here, going back to the, the management interface. Um, we definitely saw some additional activity here, some threat, threat emulation. Uh, we can drill, drill down, show you the additional activity that was uh, observed um, for, for a particular query, and, and then uh, give you the ability to look at a particular report uh, down at, uh, at the at the management level. So so here here's that Pamela's PC that anti exploit, um, and we could view that same forensic report on the manager just like we did uh, on the endpoint. This is this is pretty much um, the demo that we have for you today. Uh, I appreciate your time, um, Nir. I'd like to open it up uh, at this point uh, for any questions. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Rich. Um, if anyone has any question, this is the time. Um, the Q&A box is open. And uh, there we are, Rich. We have uh, our first question from Joseph. Okay. Uh, Q&A. All right. Uh, you're currently doing initial testing endpoint complete prior to deployment. How can we test Sandblast protection functionality safely? Um, so, so how can you test it safely? So I would get with your checkpoint engineer. Um, they have sample um, malware files uh, that they can control, and um, uh, with you know with their supervision, they can take a sample endpoint. Uh, and download some of those to show you how we protect against that, either through HTTPS or some other methodology to show you that the protections are enabled and, and capturing it. Um, Sandblast agent, the second part of this is Sandblast agent for browsers going to release with, for other browsers besides Chrome. Oh yeah, good question, I'm sorry. So uh, Sandblast agent for browsers is supported today in Chrome, IE11, and Firefox. Okay, so um, the question I typically get is what about Edge and Safari? Uh, so uh, Microsoft Edge does not support file manipulations within the browser plugin uh, format. Uh, same thing with Safari. We could possibly do anti phishing controls on those browsers, but we cannot do emulation and threat extraction because the browser plugin uh, uh, support uh, doesn't include file manipulation support. Um, and then uh, question is, uh, is this going to be fully integrated into R8020 management? Uh, my understanding is that uh, endpoint management uh, will be fully integrated with R8020 management. So you'll be able to manage Sandblast agent and Sandblast network through the same management instance. Um, it will not have all the features of R8020 uh, from from a management aspect, read, write, mul multiple um, admins, but it will be able to run on the same management platform and have consolidated logs uh, on the back end. Uh, okay, another question, does Sandblast agent need to be connected to uh, the Sandblast appliance or the cloud to send all the files uh, analyzed for traffic? Okay, so, um, it depends on the security control. Uh, so uh, threat emulation requires connectivity either to a TE appliance or the cloud in order to do emulation of files. Um, Anti-ransomware and anti-exploit is completely standalone, doesn't need any connectivity, can, can work independent, uh, can be completely air-gapped and, and function without uh, any um, uh, connectivity. Uh, so it depends on the uh, security control. Okay. Any, any other questions, guys? Um, 
Okay, so in the invitation, you all have my email. I will send out um, the recording, and um, and I will also send out our next sessions uh, for the ones that missed out this one or joined in the middle. Or uh, I will also send the uh, session for the Sandbox Network um, for next month as well. So um, you can join us there. Um, but if uh, if that's it, uh, I would again like to thank everyone for joining. I want to thank Rich as well uh, for conducting this great demo, and uh, have a great rest of the day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, folks.